started. Awesome. I'm, I'm excited. Okay, perfect. Well, um, well, welcome so much, everyone. Welcome to Book Studio and Business. My name is Tani Bro. I will be your host today, and we are very excited to have Emmy Astasha with us today. She is a best-selling author. She is a PhD. She shares a lot of great insight into really what motivates people and living your best life. So I will have all of her details on the website for you. So, Emmy, we are so glad to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to, to be here. Excellent. Well, I would really just love to hear your story because that is very impressive. And I know you're calling from the UK. So thank you for taking some time out to talk with us today. So tell us your story. Like, how did you get into this? PhD is always impressive. And you're an author. You've written a couple books. So tell us, tell us about it. Well, as you may notice, I'm like a proper nerd. Like I've I've always <laughs> loved studying. I've always loved school. So um, I did my undergrad in psychology, and I was so um, inspired by it. You know, I was so enthusiastic about psychology. So I went on, did my masters, went to London, did my masters and my PhD, postdoc, and and ended up working at a university. You know, as a university lecturer, you know, pursuing that academic career, but. You've noticed as okay. well that I've transitioned into um, coaching and writing books for lay audiences because as an academic, I felt as if it wasn't enough that I'm writing all these research papers, that I'm just talking to students in the classroom, that I'm just, you know, talking to other researchers and, and fellow psychologists. I felt that I wasn't reaching enough people and, and making enough impact. So I thought, okay, I have all this knowledge and experience in psychology and I've been studying psychology for 20 years. It's not right that I'm just keeping it within this small circle. So I decided to write um, self-help books um, for lay audiences, basically taking out the best in psychology in applied psychology to help people manage their fears, to help people build their confidence, you know, to change your to change your life. Because I've seen so many people who feel as if they are stuck in a rut. And I know so many techniques in psychology that people can use. And, you know, that's what drove me to, to actually come out of the four walls of academia and do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I mean, before I started this self-publishing career, you know, I was writing research papers and, you know, textbooks. But I just felt that it wasn't enough. I could help more people by doing what I do now. That's amazing. And I would have to, and that's what they say when you're starting to get into your writing career. Most people have always journaled or kept, you know, a, a writing of something. But you did it at a professional level. So you were writing papers and books. So you took that content and then formed it into your first book, right? That's correct. You know, it's just that, yeah, th I have all this background, you know, I'm, I'm teaching psychology, so I, I know all about psychology. Mm -hmm. We teach it at a very theoretical level. And for me, it's not enough to just talk about theory. You know, all these theories can be applied in practice and people can use it. So why not help people to do that? And, and that's what I did with my books. That's amazing. Did you ever... Um do in like you're are you doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with people too like, um like as a counselor because i mean you have the degree behind the psychology do you ever counsel people at that level too just like you would be a great shrink i might call you all the time <laughs> <laughs> well the, the truth is i'm actually coaching but not psychological coaching interestingly enough um I am coaching uh, aspiring authors uh, at the moment because they've okay. seen how I've written my books. When I wrote my books last year, I actually um, had a full-time job and I just came back from maternity leave as well. So I have a little one, you know, it's a busy family life, full-time job. Oh, wow. And I ended up writing three number one best-selling books at that time. And People started asking me, uh, how did you do that? Uh, how did you make mm -hmm. that work? And that's when I started yeah. you know, coaching people and I actually developed a course as well um, because there are so many people out there who also want to write their own books. 
I have experience mm-hmm. and I actually use psychology there as well to help them, you know, um, overcome imposter syndrome, for example, because there are a lot of aspiring authors who have a story to tell. They have all this mm-hmm. experience and, and knowledge in their heads, but they feel as if they're not good enough to, to write a book. And as a psychologist, I can help you with that, you know, unleash your, your full potential, unleash your confidence to actually write and share your book. You know, I help them keep track, you know, with, in, in terms of their, um, in terms of accountability and commitment and, and get their book done um, as, as expected. So I am applying psychology, if, you know, let's put it that way. I'm applying psychology to help aspiring authors to write and self-publish their books um, actually in 90 days or less. <laughs> I love it. You're going to have me as your biggest fan because I, that is one of my goals I put on my vision board this year. I was like, I am going to do this. And I started looking into different ways to do it. And there are so many ways and so many courses and you almost get lost in, oh gosh, there's so much, but I would, I'm going to learn more about that. I'm going to check out your website and probably hit you up for some more information to learn as much as I can. But something that you said, the imposter syndrome is such a topic that even um, my friends in business and in friends that are um, just successful in their jobs, but they move into new positions or they move into a new role or they start getting, they start getting in that setting that they've always wanted to be in. And then all of a sudden they're like, they're sitting at the table thinking, oh, maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe what I say isn't as relevant as what everyone else says. And, and they, and getting through that mindset, I think I could see how psychology or whatever issue you're dealing with could really help work through that. Yes, absolutely. And, and as you've noticed, even the most experienced, most accomplished people experience imposter syndrome. And in my book, I actually talk about imposter syndrome remedy. We cannot cure imposter syndrome. We can only remedy this because there will always be self-doubt. Whenever we, come up, you know, we, whenever we encounter new projects, new challenges, we will always have that feeling of, Oh, I'm not sure if I'm good enough for this. Of course, because it is new. <laughs> you know, if it is something mm-hmm. you haven't encountered before, you will have this um, this self doubt. But it's a matter of recognizing um, where this doubt is coming from, understanding how you're going to to manage it effectively, so you can carry on carry on with what you have to do and not let the self doubt stop you. So it's about mm-hmm. recognizing that. And, and again, I teach techniques in my books, um, how you can deal with that. There's a technique I call the TLC technique. And it's about giving your inner critic a bit of TLC. A lot of self-help gurus will ask you to crush your inner critic or you know to, to banish your inner critic. I don't encourage any violence here. I say give it a bit of <laughs> And it basically means it's it's um it's it's drawn from from rational emotive therapy from psychology and TLC stands for uh, is it true is it logical is it constructive so whenever you have these inner critic messages you follow that questioning sequence is it true if you're telling yourself I'm not good enough for this I'm not qualified to do this ask is it true check your resume I'm sure you will find enough qualification and and experience. To, to show that you are good enough for this. You can also ask, is it logical? If you're telling yourself, I'm never, g- never going to be good at this, is it logical? If you, if you do this and keep practicing over and over and over again, it's not logical that you're not going to get better. So it's only a matter of time and it's only a matter of practice. And the final question is, is it constructive? How does thinking this way help you in any way? So, for example, I have previous clients who would say, ah, you know, I do all these things, but other people are better than me. So, you know, if other people are better than me, then what I'm doing is not good. Well, that may be true. Other people may be good, uh, may be better than you, but it is not constructive. How is that helping you to, you know, to, to feel bad about yourself just, just because other people are doing better than you? Ask, is it constructive? How can you make this constructive? If other people are doing better than you, what can you learn? 
you know, from them to improve your own practice. You don't have to feel bad about yourself. You have different backgrounds. You have different experiences. You have different challenges in life. How can you make this thought constructive so you can move forward and get on with what you have to do? So all I have to say, TLC, you know, give your inner critic a bit of TLC and ask, is it true? Is it logical? Is it constructive? And you will find that it's likely that you don't have enough evidence to show that it's true. And even if it is true, you have to always go back to logic and think of ways to make it constructive. I absolutely love that. I'm taking notes over here. I'm like, this is such great stuff to really think about. Because sometimes we do get in our head way too much. And it can affect it, it can affect every other area. And I love the last one that you said about we all have different experiences and different challenges and that comparing yourself to other people is such a, it can, I mean, I like competition and I like getting ahead and I like doing that, but, but you're right. It can be, it can, it can be harmful, right? If you focus too much on that comparing yourself and really focusing on what you've accomplished and where you're at and how much you've done. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's a tough one to get out of your head. Yeah, and, and the other thing is if, if the TLC technique is not working, you know, probably because the the inner critic messages are so ingrained in your head that you're saying it is true, mm -hmm. it is logical, there's nothing I can do about this. One thing that you can do is actually involve someone else in the conversation, reach out to another mm -hmm. reach out to another person. Because if you only have that conversation between you and your inner critic, <laughs> Mm -hmm. You really need a third party to, to give another perspective. Yeah. So that's why I have the PAME code, um, which is the, the name of my, of my brand. You know, PAME is a Greek word that means let's go together. And in this journey, we can actually go together. You know, whatever your wins are, your challenges, your, your difficulties, life is sweeter when you share it with others. And in the same way, if you are experiencing imposter syndrome and you, you couldn't sort of have if you couldn't have a decent dialogue with your inner critic bring someone in and and you know have another person share that conversation um you know it's a three way conversation to give another perspective yes. i love that i have recently really embraced that too like and found my tribe and so it when you are celebrating each other it's just so much it's nice to have people that are encouraging you and you can encourage yourself, but to have that third, I like that third party that can come in if you're, if you're not there in your head where you need to be. But I do feel it's so important to have that tribe of people that do encourage you and don't have an agenda. They're just there to support you. They're doing well, you're doing well, but you have that. I don't know. It's kind of just that comfort of knowing that, People are out there on your side too. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. And, and our motto is, you know, let's go together. And, and life is sweeter when, when you share your journeys together. Pame. It's, um, it's Greek, but it is spelled P-A-M-E. So if you go to, is it the, the Pame code? That's correct. That's correct. It's a Greek word that means let's go together, but I actually use the acronym PAME to stand for purpose, action, momentum, and energy. And what that means is whatever we do in life, always remember your purpose. Why are you doing what, what you are doing? What is your purpose? But purpose is not enough without action. If you have intentions, you don't just wish for it. You make it happen. So you take action, mm -hmm. consistent action that's why momentum comes next you know you have to be resilient and keep going if you really want to fulfill your purpose and finally e is for energy you know keep the positive energy up you know celebrate your wins share your wins share your joy and, and that's how you can you can keep it going without burning yourself out in the process so it's pame which is greek for let's go together but it's also an acronym for purpose action momentum and energy always remember your purpose always couple that with action consistent action to keep momentum and keep the positive energy up you know celebrate your wins share your joy express gratitude you know that kind of stuff 
I I love it. I feel like I'm this is my own personal session. <laughs> I'm getting so much from you right now. I'm glad. Well, I, I, really... hope is, uh, I hope it is really helpful. You know that that this is this is what I do. You know, in in my books, I you you have all these things that you already know, um, that you already practice. Mm-hmm. But when you make it into acronyms and and you know when you for, like the TLC technique and, and the PAM, mm-hmm. it just makes it easier to remember and easier to implement. Um, because it's you know it's bite sized, um, easy to remember, and you, you just do it really. <laughs> I love it. So okay, so best selling books, a PhD, a professor, and now you're now you're um, and you just had a little one. So do you have any tips on how you stay motivated? How I stay motivated. To be perfectly honest with you, I actually hit rock bottom um, just after I came back from maternity leave, um, probably it was postnatal depression. Um, and, you know, I was thrown back into maternity leave, from maternity leave, and I just didn't know what was going on. So what kept me motivated, what's keeping me motivated right now is I remember the place where I was a couple of years ago. I never, ever want to go back to that place again. It's It's just absolutely horrible. So, Having myself, having picked myself up from that experience, seeing that my life is worth living because I have a son who's looking to me as his role model, um, whatever is happening around me, work or whatever is happening outside, I always remember that I have a son who needs me, who watches what I do. And I keep going so I can, uh, you know, so I can show him um, what a good role model I can become, what we can achieve in this lifetime. And, you know, that that's what's, you know, that's what's keeping me going. And that's what keeps me motivated right now. I love that. Your family is so important. I know when I had my daughter, she's 14 now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm dealing with the teenager years. Wow. But <laughs> But I will tell you, that is the biggest life-changing thing you can go through. I mean, you, it, your whole paradigm of your perception of what's important is it, just completely erased. And some, this new little thing is in your life. So I, I can definitely see that um, and, and where you're at right now. Well, yeah, I love it's, that. it's an absolute shift because as I've said, you know, I'm I'm an absolute nerd, probably super obsessed with my career as well. Um, but when when my little one came, it's just none of this actually matters. You have this new life here that that you need to nurture and and grow. And and th- the time that you have with them as children is so short. They will grow up so quickly that just like that, you know, I remember he was in my belly. Now he's just running around. It's like, how did that happen? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's yeah. just recognizing that the time is limited. The time is precious and, you know, make the most out of this time while we can. And you know, especially with, with our own lives as well, just make the most of what we have right now. Absolutely. So if you had to recommend a book, and I know you've written books, so it could be one of yours. <laughs> and I told you, I looked at your website and I do the same thing. We have a reading list of just favorites. And I sometimes I'll reread something and it means something completely different at this stage of my life than it did even 15 years ago or when I read it in the past. But if you had a book to recommend to somebody, do you have a favorite that you would say, read this book? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm I'm really proud of my books. <laughs> you know, it's called the, the Psychology in Your Life series. You know, Change Your Life for Good, Imposter Syndrome Remedy, and Fear is Not My Enemy. Um, I think I'm gonna write another one on resilience and grit, but that's further down the line. But if if there is one book that really um, inspired me to to do what I do now, it's Napoleon Hill's um, Think and Grow Rich. I mean, it's it's a complete um, shift in, in the way I think, in the way I approach things. And what I find interesting, actually, is when I was a six-year-old girl, I have this little poster of, like, a, a quote from a book that I saw mm-hmm. every single day. 
And, you know, I left home, uh, you know, and, and 20 years later, I pick up Napoleon Hill's book and realize like, oh my goodness, you know, this is what I've been reading every single day, you know, in my childhood, you know, until my early adulthood. So his book actually had a a really strong influence in me. It was, uh, what what were the words? It, it It's not the one who, it's it's about that you think you can, you know, if, if you think you can, then, then, then go for it. Um, so it's it's a really powerful book, and and I would highly recommend it to people. It's all in the state of mind, and if you if you can think it, and then you know you can go for it. Yep, I do. I'm looking at my bookshelf over here, and I know that's on there. <laughs> <I> <laughs> it, it's it's yeah, it's one. it's the line you know, uh, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. Okay, it's 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 very sexist, you know, if you're calling yeah, it the man, but you know, the person who thinks uh, the, the person who who thinks he can can something like that. That is amazing. I, I absolutely, I think you are amazing. I really love what you're doing. I love the energy that you're putting out there. Um, I am going to check out every book that you write from here on out because I know you're <laughs> probably going to write many more. <laughs> I know you will. So I really appreciate you joining us on the podcast today, joining us on the video, and we will definitely keep in touch. I will have all of your contact information. So if you want to join um, and go to the website and look at some of the stuff that's out there, I think, I think it's just great knowledge that's being put out there by you. So we, I just really appreciate that. And I thank, thank you so much for your time today. And if people want to reach out, you know, I'm very friendly, <laughs> as you can see. Mm -hmm. Feel free to reach out if you need any support. And for the aspiring authors out there, you know, feel free to get in touch. I, I would love to help you um, in your journey to, to write your own stories and share your own knowledge with everyone. Excellent. Well, I, I'm probably going to be your first. <laughs> I'm going to look at all that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You have a great day. You, you too. Bye for now. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today at Books, Beauty, and Business. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview with with Emmy Astacio. She is absolutely incredible. All her information will be below. Her website, her author course, her books, um, links to Amazon, everything you could want to know to find out to stay in touch and to learn more about some of the programs and books that she has. Hope you guys enjoyed. I uh, hope you stay tuned for many more. You have a wonderful day. Bye.